Hey, this is Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is teaching tips, tools, ideas, and resources for new college instructors. I have a few videos about Canva, but I've never mentioned the apps function of Canva. And so today I thought I'd show you a few apps that you might want to use in your teaching or your side hustle or your research. When you're just creating materials, these are ways to really up the game. We're here in Canva and I've just created a page size in order to see these examples. You can choose whatever type of format you want there, but these are just to show you what they look like. And so on the left here, you have the usual toolbar that you use to add text, add elements, add images, upload things, etc. But the apps section is what we're focusing on in today's video. So there are tons of apps. Some are AI powered, some are not. So you can just kind of go through and see what might interest you. But in this case, we're going to start with the first one, which is called Bingo Cards. So Bingo Cards, because I have an icebreaker that I mentioned multiple times that I love doing that involves bingo, here's a much faster way of doing it if you want to create the cards yourself. So you go ahead and click on the app. Uh, the first time you use it, you get to say accept that yes, you want to use it. And then you go ahead and get to this section. Now, there's a few examples that you can use automatically and it kind of shows you how this works. So for example, if you wanted to have a bingo game with your students and test their knowledge of different countries, you can click countries and then it enters some countries for you. You could also add more to the list very easily. You just you know go ahead and type in your countries that you want to include here. You can choose then the grid size. So maybe you're doing three by three. You can go all the way up to five by five. So let's just make it four by four for, for interest stakes. Number of cards. Well, how many students do you have? Maybe you have 30. And then the font for the bingo card itself. So let's go with impact just for fun here. I'll have draw grid lines on to make it easier for the spaces to be seen. And then you create the bingo cards. And so now it auto generates using those words on that list. Three different cards that, as you can see, Russia here, Kenya here, Italy here, they've randomized it for you. So you're not having to do that yourself um, or having your students do it. So you can go through and you can say, all right, I'm going to click this one and it adds it to your page. You can then size it however you'd like. So maybe you want it to be down here. Right. One thing to notice is it creates the grid lines across the inside of the, the bingo card, but not around it. So maybe you want to select here and add a border. So you can obviously add different types of borders. Let's say a solid line. And now it looks like that. You can obviously change um, how big the border is as you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and go with two here. You can run the corners or not. And so there you go with a bingo card. And so you have this first one here. You now you add a new page. And now card two, and you size it, add the border, etc. And so you just go on and on, and you just literally click and add it to the page. And of course, you got decorations around it, make it more fun to look at for your students as well. But this is really great if you're someone who wants to do a bingo icebreaker or bingo for other reasons. Maybe it's an exam review game that involves bingo cards, then you can go right back here and you can put in whatever words you want, right? Whatever relates to your course, the grid size, the number of cards, the font, and go ahead and create them. So this one's great for this type of activity, it makes it much faster to create random bingo cards. As I mentioned, you know, maybe you want to do something fun up here for decorating the page. So that can lead us into our next app which is a font frame app that makes it really easy to create really visually enticing titles. And so let's say, okay, we're here with our countries. So we're going to go to the photos section and let's say it, we're going to search for maps and I'm going to find a free one here that I like the look of, you know, we can, we can use this one, right? So, here is a photo and we're going to go ahead. I'm going to delete this one, move this down here. And then just to make it easier, I like the whole image there. So we're going to go ahead and use that. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and download this second page to use with this next example. So not page one, but a PNG of page two. Now going back up here, the app we're gonna use is called Font Frame. Yeah, here we go. And this is what it does, right? You have an image on, and you can choose what words to put in the text. So for here, we're gonna call this country bingo. Okay, if you want, you can make it all caps, but we're gonna go ahead and choose a file. I'm gonna use the image I just found and then you can move it around as you can see yeah, so the image doesn't work that well because of the passport. However, you can also make the image bigger. And in that case, when I move it, that works better. So I can see maybe like that, all right? That looks pretty cool. And then I can try it also with all caps, country, bingo. Okay, there you go. And you can go into settings here, change the font, the alignment, the thickness, thickness of the outline, etc. I'm going to go ahead and keep it like this though. I like how that looks and then click add to the design. And now we just make it bigger. Center this. And we have country bingo. So again, in this case, you're just typing in the words for whatever title of what you're creating add an image that matches the concept of those words and then again you can move it around as you'd like make it smaller or bigger so that it looks exactly as you want it to look so this one's a great one for that design aspect so that's font frame and i did some experimenting as well because i knew there had to be an easier way of doing this so if i click another photo so let's do the one up here so this one it's right here and now I go back to apps, the font frame. I have this image selected, so I can say use selected image. And now it's done that. So you don't actually have to go through the whole process of downloading an image. You can just have one on the screen, select it, and then say use selected image. And again, you can move this around as you need. I like that compass, but let's see. So yeah, but it looks kind of strange with the compass. So, oh, over there it looks better. All right, and then I could add it to the design and then compare notes, which one I like better. I like this first one better, it's more colorful, so I'll delete this. But yes, just as a quick note, you can just add an image and then use selected image when using this app. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the second page here just to have a blank canvas again. Now, if you're someone, you know, you're an educator with a side hustle, then potentially you'd wanna make use of the app called Mockups. Because what this allows you to do is add an image of your product to different types of like frames that are a bit more enticing than just like having the image flat on the page. So for example, here, if you go down, you might have it, maybe it's a digital project product. If you do see all here, then you might have, okay, well, here's an image of someone with their laptop open. And then you could add, let's say, the cover of your online course that you are selling. Or if you, let's go back here. Go down. So maybe you have something that is more on the phone. Here's a phone, right, a smartphone. If you are selling teacher apparel, maybe you have the image on here right um so then if you go ahead and let's just use a photo because i don't have any images of products here and let's do rainbow so here's an image and you go there you drag it over and it adds it to that frame right so very simple grab put over the image and then i'll add it to the frame and then if you go in here, you double click that frame, you can see it here, so you can resize as needed onto the frame. And yeah, you can do different things to it. So you could obviously flip it. There's alignment, so you can align it in the middle. 
So very simple to do. Obviously you're limited by what is available in the app as far as mockups go. But if we go back over here, there are quite a few options for you. So this is again, just something that if you are side hustling in any way, you might find this useful to use. So this one's pretty cool too, very pretty. Something simple that you can use. Okay, so then go on to another blank page. You might be someone who's getting more techie when curating your activities for your students or even for somebody else. Maybe this is for a business card or for your the parents of your students, again, side hustles, whatever the case may be. But if you wanna create a QR code that leads to a certain website, that's very easy to do with the Canva apps. So once again, I'm gonna look up QR code in this case. There are quite a few of them, so you might decide to experiment with ones that are a bit more visually appealing, right? Because you can see obviously some of them would curate um, uh, prettier, I guess, QR codes. But if you wanna keep it really simple, this one is you know, very easy to use. It's literally just, hey, tell me what the URL is. So let's say we're doing my website. Okay, and then you can customize it a bit if you want. So maybe I wanna do my brand color, which is purple for now, I'll keep it easy and just do it like this, All right? And then background color, margin, generate the code. And now there's a QR code that if anybody uses, they'll get to my website. So this is super simple, right? It's literally just, hey, my brand color, put in the URL, make it. If you want to get a bit more advanced, then I would you know, recommend experimenting with some of these and seeing maybe you can add like specific images to the QR code just to make it a bit fancier. But for me, this is enough for, for my use. For this next one, if you're using the free Canva version, then this is a great find because if you use the pro version of Canva, you can erase the background of images. And that's something that really appeals to me, but I don't want to get the pro version. So with the app, you can go ahead and look for one that erases the background. So background eraser right here. All you do is you choose an image. So I went ahead and downloaded this one to make it easy. And then you click remove background and it will do so for you. So obviously depending on the image, this might be cleaner than others, but it is a way of not having to pay for the pro in order to get rid of the background in Canva. And so here you go. So that looks great. And let's say we go to photos here and we add a background, position it to the back. So as you can see, it's pretty awesome. Now you can do whatever background you want for your image. Okay. So that one's definitely a great one to use if you want to use that function but not get the pro version of Canva. And then to wrap up this video, though, if you want more of these app previews, let me know in the comments and I can create more videos. If you're a math teacher, then you will want to know about equations. So if you use this tool, you can create visually appealing equations. Uh, so for example, I'm not you know, a math teacher, but let's keep it for the basic examples here. So four plus three times two equals whatever the case may be. Let's choose a color, this purple, and then insert the equation. And it does so for you. So obviously this is pretty simple. You know, will it be that hard to make just using font? Probably not. But for the advanced ones, now we get really into it here. So for example, getting into bracket aspects of it. So if we're doing this and it's this, and now we have one over three plus four, and then outside of here times, and again, we're doing another bracket here and we're gonna go ahead and make that a fraction as well. And then times three, we're gonna put this as two times one minus one. 
equals x, and then we insert that equation. Now that's been created as well, right? The color wasn't changed here, but I can change that color. So it's a way of creating really complex equations in a much easier way, I feel, than using some other type of tool. If you found this video helpful, click like and let me know. And if you want to hear about more apps in the Canva tool, just let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to not miss out on future content, and I'll see you next time.